Today on the Tom Kelly Show, we're going to talk about the best way to die. Unexpected <laughs> heart attack or... I can't even do it. Unexpected heart attack or stroke. Let's just start the show. The Tom Kelly Show. Everybody, I want you to go to the Tom Kelly Show. I want you all to know about the Tom Kelly Show. All right. Here we go. There's Keep music playing. Da, 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 da. Here we go. And trigger warning. Spoiler alert. Pee before you leave, people. You are experiencing a uh, last minute. Uh, I don't know if it's last minute, but it is. Uh, we're in real time ish uh, episode of the Tom Kelly Show. I am here with my uh, friend, my mentor in life, uh, the woman who uh, arguably uh, forced me to do this podcast on a. <laughs> <laughs> twice a week schedule uh one of the fairy godmothers of my career one of my mentors in life uh emmy award winning author well emmy award winning tv producer uh author and comedian and friend jeanette barber jeanette hi okay <laughs> I don't know how we were. I had a whole list of deep things to talk about. I hope you don't mind just sidekicking with me instead of doing the usual stuff we usually do. Love it. Uh, but because uh, I have a basically this is what we call a housekeeping episode. Uh, but we were just sort of talking about this while I was peeing behind the green screen uh, in the bathroom, not like just behind the green screen. That's uh, what he says. Real quick, folks. Best way to die. Poll now. Comment now. Uh, unexpected heart attack or stroke. How would you want to go? Oh, definitely a heart attack. A stroke, you can be paralyzed. A stroke doesn't necessarily kill you. So, yeah, yeah, and that's the problem. Yeah. Another great, great way to die uh, would be um, uh, an, a plane crash after you took Xanax. So Ooh. you didn't even know it was happening. And then your loved ones get the settlement. Listen, it's, that's on them. Oh, the settlement from... Yeah, they're like the plane crash. See, I'd love to die. Like, my friend John McCann died. And I don't know the specifics. But he died. He had insurance. He had, like, the big life insurance package. And he gave that to his mom so his mom could take care of herself. And I always thought that was really nice. That's why uh, I am actually... Inc I'm not worth much. But to you ladies out there, I'm incredibly well insured. You know, I am. I'm he, worth more uh, dead than alive. You care more about other people. I could give up about... Uh, Good. Uh, Thank you for saving me to beep. No, once I'm dead. Once I'm dead, I'm dead. The, the life is on you. So okay. I'm not going to die for the settlement. I just want to die quickly and uh, in my <laughs> sleep. And okay. whatever I have to take, whatever illegal drugs I need to consume in order to die in my sleep, I'm in. Okay, uh, so housekeeping real quick. Uh, the smog is back in New York City. This today, it, we're recording this on July 1st, 2023. Uh, you're probably watching this on the 4th of July or the 5th of July. So hope you had a great holiday. Uh, the smog is back, not nearly as bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of gross, right? Oh, it is. You can feel it. You can see it. Um, and I'm coughing a little bit now and then. So then I wonder about what ailment I've gotten. I don't think you die quickly enough from emphysema. So so you don't think you have that already? No, I don't think I have that. Well, well that's good. All right. We, <laughs> this has become the most depressing Touch episode I've ever done. COPD, that's all. Uh, I want to do a quick thank you. I'm going to do the Magic Mirror at the beginning. First, Magic Mirror 2, uh, John Redman. John Redman, oh. always, a, he was very nice. He's done me a favor. It, uh, I'll be vague about it in a second. But John Redman always sends me a nice text message whenever you're on the podcast. Oh. So I know he's going to say something nice. Oh. I love seeing you on Facebook. I think you're the best, and you're still incredibly handsome. Wow. Uh, I only get two out of those three compliments. So, uh, But we did a Zoom party on the Tom Kelly Show, and I just want to do a quick uh, shout-out to my friends in the secret Tom Kelly Show fan group who came to my last-minute Zoom party as we played Limerick Trivia. Uh, <laughs> Magic Mirror Time. Quick thank yous to Ryan Wally, Franklin, Michael Walter, Judy Jensen from Reno, Triple M Mark, Missy, Jacob Lee Downey, Raj, uh, Diana from Canada, Lainey Abels, uh, Fatori Paluka, who never turned on her camera or her microphone, so we're assuming you're a real person. Uh, also to Will Abels. Uh, Will Abels is uh, Lainey Abels' uh, brother. And you ever do a Zoom meeting, Jeanette? No. Okay. All no, you I mean, with one person, but never uh, with a whole bunch of them. Okay. So the thing is, Will and Laney sat next to the laptop together. 
They watched the Tom Kelly show like it was an old fireside chat. <laughs> okay. And then I get a text message from Will after the show. I Like I talked to Lainey. Yeah. I interacted with her. She has an interesting story to share. She lives in a studio apartment in Hell's Kitchen where the shower is in the main room of the studio apartment. Oh, yeah. I've okay. seen those. Okay. You have? I've never seen Well, them. in the village, uh, in the old days, in the West Village, the uh, tub and the shower was always in the kitchen. That, I thought that was only in like 1920s New York where the where the Italian immigrants would turn it into a dining room table, that kind of a thing. I didn't think that was so a thing. So I'm a little older. Okay. Touche. Yeah. Now, <laughs> so, but I get this note from Will, nice to acknowledge me during the Zoom. And I'm like, you were all the way in the back. I had no idea, you know, like whatever. So Will Abels, I'm acknowledging you now. Uh, and... And I sent Will a video after, and I'm like, I, I said, Will, I feel awful. You're making me feel bad. Will, if you don't reply, I'll jump. I basically offered, I'm like, Will, you're going out of your way to make me feel bad. Uh, and Did I, he reply? And he replied, no, Tom, I, I, I'm glad you feel bad, but I don't want you to kill yourself. So thank you. Although it would have been funnier when you think about it. <laughs> it would have been a lot funnier had you not replied. J just delay your reply. Like two or three days later, um, you could have replied and say, uh, gotcha. Yeah, just got this, buddy. Just yeah. got this. Yeah, Sorry. it's not a criticism. It's just, but it's, it's we're brainstorming on how to be funny. So uh, one of the good things about that Zoom cast, that Zoom party was putting things out into the universe. You know what it is. Don't say what it is. They know what it might be. But for those of you who are in the room and we were talking about jobs I would like, I have an interview on Wednesday. And that's all I'm going to say. And I would not have started looking for that job if it weren't for friends in the Zoom chat saying, oh, Tom, that's really you should put cool. your resume in. So that's really cool. I think that I specifically owe Ryan Wally a thank you for that. But, but, but uh, if this is a podcast where I'm always looking for a life lesson, one of the, the, the sweeping life lessons I'm trying to teach my nephews that I learned last week was you have to put things out into the universe and see what the network can do for you. And the one good thing about the Tom Kelly show podcast and why I push the zoom, the, the Facebook group, the, the secret Facebook group, how big of a secret is just put in, <laughs> put it in and ask to join and you're in, but it is, it's a nice network of uh, weirdos and lonely people like me. Like well, everyone. Yeah, no, but well, like, I mean, I always say, uh, this is the Tom Kelly show. This is the podcast ready off beat. Come to meet. It is. I love that. And if you put, you know, anyway, if you put it out there, other people's wheels will get turning and maybe good things will come back for you or you could do good things for other people. I think they call that a mastermind. Have you heard that word mastermind? A mastermind group. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in yeah. some ways we're a mastermind. You know what I always used to say? Uh, well, me and a, a friend, when uh, back in the early stand-up days, in order to make anything happen, all you have to do is go out the house. You just have to leave the house. And now in this uh, digital age, um, that's kind of what you're saying. You have to go, yeah, you have to go out of the house. Actually, one thing that you have told me to do that I have trouble with at times is just hang out at the club. Just go out. That was exactly what we we're talking about back in uh, in those days. Every single time, uh, if you just go out, you will meet somebody and uh, you'll have a conversation. You'll get an idea for a, a new joke. Maybe there'll be a new connection. Uh, maybe you'll you'd, you know make a friend or reason to go someplace else. And without fail, if you just leave the freaking house. You know, and and that's. So a lot I of my been out in six years. No, uh, but I'm having trouble in life with connecting the dots. And you know, I was talking to you know one of my nephews who I love, uh, and he's figuring out his own path. And and the one thing that I think is fun, like I always use the, the line for this podcast as owning the midlife crisis, but in reality, I'm owning transitions. You know, like yeah. uh, the quarter life crisis, the I'm going into college crisis, whatever it is, there's moments where you just don't know where to go. You don't know what you're doing. And it's about connecting dots. And, and, and I'm having a trouble in life connecting my dots. Like I've been at this sort of wall stuck in neutral for a while. And my line of wisdom for the day is if you can't connect the dots, just make some new dots. Yeah. You know, just go out and make some new dots. If you can't, if you don't know what to do, just do something new for a day. And maybe that'll, and whatever it is, there's no such thing as wasted experience. Um, 
I've also been obsessed with, if, as you hand me my coffee here, I've been obsessed with Whitney Euland, our celebrity energy coach. I have been obsessed with her piece of advice at the end of episode 307, if not 306. Uh, she says, Tom, when you unblock one thing wrong with your life, other things open up. And I, and I said it on the Zoom party. I've been obsessed with this energy. It's kind of like when you unclog the toilet. <laughs> all the hair and all the poop goes down once you get the clog out. Right. And I'm trying to unclog my toilet. And by the way, she did not make the toilet joke, but she's really good. But anyway, you had a reply. Well, to that. when you said that uh, earlier this afternoon, because we've been talking. Oh yeah, for this hours. is our six of a podcast. Yeah. We've only just aired the last five minutes. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it made. What well, I used to um, uh, oh say is that uh, whenever you introduce iron discipline into your life in any one aspect, it will affect every single aspect of your life. And now, what does iron discipline mean? Iron discipline is you do something, uh, well, this is the example I, uh, I used. Um, years and years and years ago, I was a chanting Buddhist, um, the nam myoho renge kyo Which, by the way, sounds like a restaurant. <laughs> the, the chanting no, Buddhist? Like, now, chanting Buddhist is kind of a silly word if right. you don't know what it means. What is a chanting Buddhist? Right. Well, the, well that, that's how you practice your religion. Like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're Catholic, maybe you're going to do the rosary. If you're, yeah, okay. uh, uh, you know, all of that. But, uh, but uh, Buddhists, uh, at least Nichiren Shoshu, uh, they chant Namyo Renge Kyo uh, endlessly. Um, and and that's in Japanese? That's in Japanese. What is it for? I have no idea. And nobody knows. No, well, somebody does, but I never figured it out. And they'll, they'll just tell you, just do it, just do it. And you also have to chant the Lotus Sutra in Japanese twice a day. It's a booklet. Um, and then you chant. So it's hours a day of, you uh, know, um, and I can't remember the uh, Lotus Supra. Hoban Pan Dai Ni. Oh, well. By the way, that's going to be my ringtone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. Um, and uh, and and uh, they would say chant for whatever you want. If you want a bike, chant for the bike. Whatever. So, uh, but I'm I'm into this, and a, a lot of the women comics in, in, at this point were 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 chanting, and I noticed I chanted for maybe eight months, and I noticed that all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, slowly, my everything started to feel different. I um, I booked more jobs because mostly I was booking, I was chanting for work, um, so all of this stuff was starting to happen and shift, and I felt different. And then I'm thinking, what is it? And I don't mean to be rude in any way to to Buddhists or to in anyone's uh, belief. I believe in everything. Um, but I thought, is it uh, uh, the power of the chant or is it the power of the discipline? Because that is iron discipline. If you do that for hours every single day because you that's iron discipline and it shifts everything. And then uh, uh, I, I also continued in our conversation, Tom and I, that uh, for me, the easiest way to have iron discipline is exercise and uh, and, and diet. Right now, uh, I've, I've been with a, a, a trainer, a fantastic trainer, the, the unbelievable. Uh, for a year and four months, I've lost uh, uh, 50 pounds. I go to the gym uh, every... Uh, I go to the gym every day. It That's iron discipline. That's not, I go to the gym when I feel like it. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I exercised and then I ate a pizza. No, I, I count calories. I stick to the thing. I exercise every single day and everything is different. I feel better. Have you ever seen me quite in such a good mood? No, this so is uh, you like, it's funny without getting too into what you're doing in your life, but yeah. Jeanette's doing a lot of work as an old lady. And I'm like, you don't look old anymore. I don't look old anymore. And I was looking like an old hag. I'm no, you, I, like when uh, I knew you yeah. at 45, uh, you, yeah, you look, uh, honestly, surprised you lasted this long. Yeah. <laughs> that said. Yeah. But it's the iron discipline. It, the, the the exercise and the uh, food control is what makes me look better. But that, but that discipline of keeping my word to myself every single day you think I always feel like going to the gym? Actually, George, who is the guy I go out with, um, he, he, here's what, when I'm leaving in the morning, I'll say to him, what do I, I, I said, what would I rather do? And he'll say, die. Because a lot of times I go, I'd rather die than go to the gym, but then I go to the gym. That's and you love a, it. I love it. I love every minute of it. But that's iron discipline. 
And that's what will change everything. And I think that the energy coach, when she says unclog one aspect of your life, it will take you iron discipline to unclog. And then suddenly, so it's funny, you're, everything you're saying, like my, I have a, a loved one who's in shape. And I'm like, dude, what made you curious about fitness and getting in shape? And he's, and he's like, you know, well, a girl broke my heart and I decided I'd get my FU body. And I'm like, oh my God. I am the complete opposite. <laughs> I was in shape, had my heart broken, and figured I'd rather, uh, oh. if I'm not going to be with the person I love, I'd rather be in a threesome with Ben and Jerry. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't know, I admire this kid for, yeah, take in, like it's a lesson I need to learn from him is he took his sadness and turned it into FU energy Whereas I was in shape and at, at least two or three times in life and I was close to what I wanted, whatever I wanted fell mm -hmm. apart. And I'm like, well, you know what? Pizza is always there for you. Yeah. But you gave up on yourself because somebody hurt you and you bought into, you deserve to be hurt. And then you, uh, I bought into, you're not good enough or something. Uh, yeah. I bought into what's the point of doing this if this didn't help. Right. As if that was what it was about instead of, of it being about you. You're not, uh, you're not in shape for other people. No, I know that makes a big difference, but you're not keeping your word for other people. You keep your word for yourself. So, it, and you let go of yourself. You, you, what you did in my opinion, and I know nothing. Right. Uh, what uh, you did is uh, so you stopped loving yourself. Oh yeah, I don't think I ever started. Yeah, that's I think a, at moments you have, but when you, but 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 that's what you did. When somebody else, if you're looking to, at someone else to love you, to f fill you with love, you're you're not going to ever find that that person. Uh, you need to uh, you being everybody. Uh, you have to find yourself and love yourself and take care of yourself first, and then you are literally you're a magnet to everybody. So, and it's great news, and it's funny. I. I Went out last Monday to uh, a comedy show at the Litchfield Theater called Butter Boy. Uh, man, I ran into a comedian named Tyrone, and I'm blacking out on Tyrone's last name, and, uh, and I feel awful about that, Tyrone. Uh, but I used one of my old expressions, uh, which is, oh, I like that guy. He hates, he's like me. He hates himself just enough. And Tyrone very kindly uh, said, you know, Tom, I hope you hit a stage where you don't hate yourself at all. And I like that line. Yeah. I like that line. Um, yeah. I, you know, we are always our own worst enemies. I don't need to, who cares? Every, everybody who doesn't like me, everybody that would like to, they're not a problem. Uh, and right now I don't hate myself, but I've spent, you know, I'm going to be 70. I've spent a lot of years hating myself did I, did, and it didn't help. Did I give you the book U Squared? No. Okay, I'm going to give you that. It's on the shelf. I'm going to give you that on the way out. Um, there's one theme of this little pamphlet, U Squared. It's, it's conscious wandering. And the one thought I was just thinking about, just with all these little thoughts and just some of the stuff we were talking about when we're social, uh, was about conscious wandering. Uh, I have a friend, I, I've told this story three times in the last week, and I wanted to tell it on the podcast because one of the people involved in the story uh, sent me a nice message on Facebook, and I don't feel like calling them. Um, <laughs> but it's about how I found my, that Quinnipiac University was the university or college for me. It's how I picked my college. Uh, when I was 18 years old, um, I, you know, I was not that smart. You've met my mom and dad. Um, I felt I didn't deserve to go to college. I suddenly realized my parents were going to pay the whole damn bill. And I also realized uh, my parents, who were really cheap when I was a kid, uh, I realized the colleges I was looking at was the value of one new car per year. Uh, you know, my dad drove the beaten up old Datsun until I was like a freshman in high school. And then we bought a Volvo, and the Volvo cost, I think, 20 or 25 grand. And then I realized, oh my God, I'm going to a college that costs one new Volvo per year. And that paralyzed me on making the decision. And, uh, and I always say my mother applied. I applied to three colleges, and then my mother applied to another 70 for me. <laughs> and Quinnipiac was one of the ones that accepted me. 
And I had gone up there four times, but for whatever reason, could not feel like this was the school for me. Uh, They had opened this whole big communication center named after Ed McMahon. And the side story on that was uh, the rumor was for years that Ed McMahon had donated $1 million, and that's why they renamed the Ed McMahon Communication Center after him. Uh, and it was going to be, uh, and it had all the TV studios, the radio studios, and that. It turns out they named it after him because his daughter went to the school, and they were hoping he would donate a million dollars. That's hysterical. Yeah, and in the end, he died broke, and the college got mad because I kept saying I wanted to do a, have the college run a fundraiser for Ed McMahon, and we were going to call it Ed McMahon's <laughs> Across America, Ed McHands Across America. That's what it was. Anyway, that's the side story, but... Every time I went into the studio, there was never anybody there. And it was the day the money was due. And I had looked at the college probably four times. I had done an overnight. Uh, I did an on-campus visit. And I think I went up for parents weekend or uh, not parents weekend, but uh, student, new student weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now it's the day the money's due. It's the, uh, uh, the day after May weekend, which is roughly one of the last days of April. Explain that later. May weekend was always in April. But I'm wandering around campus and I didn't know where to go. And I, was, uh, I had met a man who I've talked to you and my listeners uh, about, a man named Father Lou. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to go see if Father Lou is in his office. I'm like, Father Lou, I'm still looking at this school. Uh, and he's like, yeah, oh, that's great. What, why won't you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I've never seen anybody in the communication center. And there's a man uh, sitting next to him who was the music teacher. His name was Sammy Costanza. And uh, Sammy Costanza, who has to be dead by now, uh, says, uh, call Mike Kalia in the communication center and ask him if there's a class you can audit. So I pick up the phone call, and this guy, Mike Kalia, answers. He says, yeah, you could come by uh, MC 190. We're doing it at 1 o'clock. I go wander by the class, and it's taught by this guy, Mike Kalia, and this woman, Bet Allen. And they were doing... You didn't go to TV school, but they would always I do. Did. In, did you? Okay. Cancel. Uh, so what we would do would be pretend talk show. That's how they would teach you how to run the cameras. And they said, why don't we have the new kid, have the, ki- the high school kid on for pretend talk show? And there's a student working the switcher. There are students working the audio board. There are three students working the cameras. Everybody's pretending. The, and, the, and the professor is interviewing me while they're all learning how to work the equipment. And we're not exactly sure how one thing led to another, but the, the, the conversation got so spirited, I think I gave the professor a lap dance. <laughs> Everybody laughed. I gave it, you know, Bet Allen, I may have given her a lap dance. There's some argument as to whom I gave the lap dance to, but it was that moment of dominoes all connecting that I said, after I gave her the lap dance and lap dance and left, I said, you know what? I could hang out here. This could be for me. And that's how I planned the next four years of my life. But that's how I got through the, but it was following the little dots. And that's what conscious wandering is? I think so. Or at least it is for me, or it's a story I wanted to tell. Maybe it's not. Oh, I find that really interesting. Yeah, but it was one of those things where I'm like, you know what? I I, I went there a couple of times. I made all these little dots. And then on that last visit, the dots connected. You know, like, I mean, who the hell, what kind of communications kid hangs out with a priest while he's looking at a school? And followed, you know, but he happened to be there. He was uh-huh. a dot. He was a charming priest. He was a funny guy. He was an army priest who happened to be working at a college. Uh, that was one dot drawn. And, who, uh-huh. you know, but it was a dot. He wasn't connected right. to anything. I happened to go to his office. There was a music professor who knew a guy at the TV school right. who knew another teacher right. to whom I gave a lap dance. Right. Uh, that's how I made my decision. Now, right now I've been in a spot where... I've been paralyzed and I have a lot of people who listen to this show. Maybe you're paralyzed. So, I mean, just, you know, tying the whole show together and really jamming in a story that I didn't need to jam into the show, Uh but wanted to because I was just too lazy to call this professor 25 years later. uh, That's how I wound up my call. You know, that's, Uh that's my conscious wandering is I don't know what to do, but to your point, get out of the house and do do something. I I don't think I ever... um... Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't think I connect dots. No, it's, you don't think that sometimes you haven't had moments where your wasted experiences all suddenly came together. Oh, you're right. One connects dots. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. But rewind. you have to make the dots I, first. You, until you said it just like that, I didn't completely understood yeah. what you meant about. Uh, so if you can't dots, see the picture, like you ever concise. play Connect the Dots as a kid? Yeah. To go from dot one to dot two, right. dot three, oh, dot four. Oh, and at the end, it's all a pony. Oh at my the God. end, it's well, a pony. Okay, Tom, that's brilliant. Yeah. And yep. that, so there you go. It took 25 minutes to get to the brilliance. Yep. Uh, but there we are. So, and, and But you have to make the dots to make the picture. So for me, I love Netflix. I love watching television. Uh, uh, I, uh, I love... Um, you know, actually, I was just watching a Netflix documentary about American gladiators, uh, you know, but that's, you know, is, but that's not making new dots all the time. Well, you know? no, but I mean, you're not dotting every single moment of your life. I think you got to dot a little more if you're, if well, you're on the sofa. You got to leave the house. You got to go and do stuff. But when you're sitting home, I just, uh, um, my, uh, th I like to read um, uh, stupid uh, things. Um, I just finished, it's tragic because I just finished uh, binge reading all of the Rex Stout Nero Wolf books. There's 47 and I just finished the 47th. It was heartbreaking. Um, I don't think those are dots. Those are, those are the relaxation. You know what I mean? Okay. And then there's, uh, you know, your your dots, dots almost always happen um, in connection, which is the full circle of your podcast, um, in that connection in the Zoom meeting that actually led to you. Uh, it led to me making a phone call, which led right. to, an, and then another phone call came to me. It caused action. Yeah. Everything happens out of action, and that spurred the action. So yeah. it is kind of a full circle. Yeah, and you have to talk anyway. You have to you have to get out there, and you have to make your dots, and then you can connect them later. Yeah, uh, or maybe they won't connect. But there's no such thing as a wasted dot. That's kind of now we're really stretching the analogy. <laughs> but listen, folks, you are my dots. You are all, each and every one of you. There are other things you could be listening to. There are other things you could be doing with your time. And all I know for sure is I am grateful to each and every one of you. Uh, if you can, show some love. Uh, when you comment on my Instagrams and my TikToks and my Facebooks and whatever, uh, however you can show love and let me know you're out there. That always makes me feel good. How about just leaving a random comment with the word dots? That's all I'll know you've gotten through 26 minutes of this. Uh, and that's it, folks. Uh, show love where love can be shown, and we will talk next time. we got a couple of good shows pre-recorded and coming up, so definitely every Monday and Wednesday the audio podcast comes out, and we do a live on Sundays and... Tuesday nights. Yeah, that's it. Sunday and Tuesday night where we have a nice little live chat in the YouTube premiere. And listen, that's it. You know what to do. Good night, New York. Stop on that.